praise, honor, and glory <clears throat> to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shag, Bahashim, Bahakadash. Yahweh is the name of our Almighty Heavenly Father in Hebrew, and that's in the name of His only begotten Son, which is Yahweh Shag, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakadash. The bond of the elders and apostles, the great millstone for Jesus as His truth. Honor to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And also honor to the hopeful we let, the one third of our people who's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments in America so that he will have mercy on us and judgment. Shalom, and we're back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. This lesson here is going to be a dream that one of our sisters had. One of our sisters in this truth. It was on Yahweh, the Maccabees backup channel. So y'all subscribe to him so y'all can have access to that video and to his lessons. But before we go any farther, we're going to let this video roll. Shalom. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Horakakutash, Barakatam. Um, I just woke up and a little snippet of a dream came to mind. I wanted to share. Please excuse my voice shaking or... So in this dream, um, there was this like barn like a like a, a horse stables like a barn with with a lot of horse compartments on each side and there was some just some ruckus happen happening outside a lot of commotion going on and there were some people in there and we heard like the doors busting so we hid and some troops was in there And there was these three troops that, that had grabbed me. And they were taking me inside a horse stable, like a little room. And I know they was going to rape me. Like they was going to rape me. And I was yelling. And kicking and screaming because I wasn't, I wasn't okay with that, obviously. I was kicking and screaming. I was saying, no, no, Yahweh, Yahweh, help me. <laughs> Yahweh, Basha, help me. Next, next thing you know, Salakia. <laughs> next thing you know, a brother from from a GMS camp showed up, and I don't want to say who, because I'm kind of I'm kind of shy. I don't know. I'm. I'm kind of bashful about it, so I'm gonna just say, Nakim from GMS, from a GMS camp showed up. Can you not? He beat them all up like nothing. And right outside the in the little room, he was just standing there, and he hid out. He just put his hand down like this, like, like trying to get me out of that room. <laughs> and I just ran up, ran up on him and I just hugged him. <laughs> I said, the water, yaw, bash me, oh shy. The water, yaw, bash me, oh shy. And he was, and he was just smiling. And he said, can't. Call, oh, yaw, bash me, oh shy. When, when he was beating all of them up, 
it was like nothing. It was like nothing. I, I, I don't know. It just looked very like nothing. Superpowers are coming. I just wanted to share just a little quick dream. Thought it was spiritual. All right, so that was the dream. So we're going to get Joe 2 and 28 real quick. And it should come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So, yeah, this even goes for our women. Because this dream that the sister told, that was prophecy. That's why it says your sons and your daughters shall prophesy by the way of having dreams and visions. And all nations of people are having dreams and visions of this end time. So this is like a bunch of previews that the Lord is showing us for what's to come. And that's the ultimate build up to like a new season or something about to come out or a new movie. It show you all these previews that's building up to it. That's Lord giving us all these dreams and visions. Everybody vision or everybody sees a little piece of this end time story. So that shows you how great it's going to be that everybody got a little piece of something. And it's always great and terrible, you know, the dreams and the visions we have. And now let me go back. So her dream was pretty much a man that the Lord saved her, you know, through his spiritual powers. And this sister, she, she sounds humble and soft-spoken, which you women need to be humble. America, make y'all think too highly of yourselves than y'all should. Y'all think y'all don't need a man, you above a man. America brainwashed you because you're going to find out through Jacob's trouble, great tribulation, that you just a woman. And that really, a woman is, is really nothing in terms of what go on in the world. You completely at the subject of a man. You the weaker vessel. You, you have no say so because you have no power. And you know, you got a little bit of power and some rights because we still have laws in place. But when the laws are done away with, when there is no law, when there's lawlessness in the streets, chaos all over the world, then what do you have to protect you? Or what do you have to stand behind? Nothing. And our women, they completely at ease, completely carefree. Like the world is not a dangerous and dark place. Like danger don't lie ahead. And that's going to take us to Isaiah 32 and 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless dollars. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble ye, women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird upon your loins with sackcloth. So yeah, the Lord is calling out to the women because there's more women than men in the nation of Israel and throughout the world. And our women are at ease. They be all out at night, sneaking out, you know, not telling nobody where they at, having their feet up on the couch with the doors unlocked, talking to all these strange men that they don't know or shouldn't be entertaining. Because they at, they at ease, even through this ministry. Women be the main be the main ones that's frowning at this truth and don't want to hear it. So that's why the Lord sent rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear the Lord's voice. Be troubled. Because Jacob's trouble 
is going to hit the women much harder than it hit the men. You know, men, we sort of got a warrior mentality, warrior spirit, we're a stronger vessel physically, and, you know, can be stronger mentally, you know, depending on the situation, like in terms of physical conflict and drama and chaos. But um, it's going to hit women harder. It, it just is. And the Lord is going to show you women that, that you do need a man. So y'all got to get out of that mind state. And when we come down here to the bottom, it reads, strip you and make you bare. This don't mean the Lord going to physically strip you. It's meaning he's going to mentally or emotionally strip you of that protective barrier that you got, you know, surrounding yourself. That protective, hard covering, that shell that you walk around with, trying to act like you tough and you bad you independent, you bold, the Lord going to show you that you're not none of those things. He going to show you that you're only a woman. He going to put you in the place of a woman as being timid, humble, soft-spoken. You're going to know you're weak in that day. <clears throat> That's why I read, strip you and make you bare. And girl, sackcloth upon your, <clears throat> upon your loins. Because when you bare, you're naked. When you're naked, you are exposed. So emotionally, mentally, the Lord is going to expose you for being a woman. The Lord is going to show you that you're a woman and nothing more. <clears throat> Isaiah 13 and 16, their children also should be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Yeah, because um, the children of you women, along with you women, going to be dashed to pieces. Their houses shall be spoiled. Didn't most of y'all women kick the man out of y'all house? Y'all wanted a divorce. You and your kids kept the house, but the man had to move out. You got restraining orders. Don't want your man around. You're trying to punish the man. Well, your house is going to get spoiled. And you're going to wish that you kept that man around. And their wives should be ravished. That means rape. <clears throat> you know, this is going into Esau. But also the two thirds of our women, hey, that's that's gonna be the judgment for most of our women. They're gonna be brutally raped to death because most of our women is fast. They like advertising, showing their curves. They like beautifying themselves twenty four seven. But the Lord gonna use all that against you. All that's gonna attract is a bunch of UN troops and FEMA death soldiers to come rape you to death. And that's what happened in the girl's dream. You know, she was in a barn, first of all, hiding out. So that dream alone tells you, we don't know where we're going to end up. It might be sewers, in a barn, in an abandoned warehouse, a train station, an underground subway. We don't know where we're going to be. But she says a bunch of chaos going on outside, you know, a bunch of commotion, a bunch of violent things happening. And she said, um... Some of the troops came in there, took her in a horse stall, and went at the raper. You know, a man of the Lord came and saved her. Yahweh delivered her. But he didn't deliver those other women that was getting raped. He didn't deliver those other people who was possibly being put to death for being raped, you know, outside the barn. So only the, the women that's in this spiritual gathering, that's part of the one-third elect, they're the only ones that's going to be delivered out their times of trouble. The Lord ain't going to hear nobody else. And most of our women is going to suffer that fate. Most of our women, you know, going to have to go through this the hard way. Yeah, so yeah, again, Jacob's trouble going to be going to be mostly for the women because there's more women in the earth anyway. So the Lord got a point to prove to you women uh, for f first and foremost and again, their children also should be dashed to pieces before their eyes. And what's that? Meaning shot, blew up, threw against the ground, beat against the rocks. Their houses should be spoiled and their wives ravished. And that's not just the women. Your kids going to get raped too. And not only that, they're going to be raping men too. Most of our men soft. They got their hair all slicked back and long. They wearing eyeliner and lip gloss. 
putting on makeup, wearing tight pants, looking effeminate. So your man going to get raped too. And, you know, y'all think y'all like men. But when these UN troops and these martial law troops rape you, it's going to hey, it's gonna be, uh, you're not going to like this one. Let me just say it that way. And, you know, a lot of our women and a lot of our men, they claim to be freaks. Well, no matter how big of a freak you are, you're not going to like this raping that's coming. <clears throat> and that's why Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. And that's what that woman did to the man of the Lord that delivered her. You know, through the power and spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. She said she ran up to him and hugged him. He said, I'll praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's, what she, that's her taking hold of one man. Now, in reality, that's not the only woman that that man will save. That man will save, you know, most likely many women. And they all going to take hold of him. So in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And what it means, wear our own apparel, you know, you got a bunch of women that like to brag and boast of themselves, talking about they wear the they wear the pants in a relationship. Like, yeah, I'm the leader of the household. I wear the pants. I'm the provider. I bring in most of the money. You know, pretty much trying to say they take the place of a man. Well, through Jacob's trouble, great tribulation, the times you're coming into. You women not going to want to be in the place of a man. You're not going to want to be the leader. You're not going to want to be the provider and protector. Because the conditions that you're going to have to lead and provide and protect in, you want fit for the job. Mentally, emotionally, and physically, you're not fit for this. So that's what it says. We will wear our own apparel. Women ain't going to want to wear their pants. She going to want to be in her place as a woman wearing the skirt and that's not me physically just in the law women are supposed to wear skirts men will wear the pants and today's society pants signify that you're the leader and make all the important decisions your woman ain't gonna want to be the leader or make important decisions you not not stable enough in any way so that's what it means when it says we were on the payroll only let us be called by thy name. What does that mean? Women don't really have access to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, except they come through a man. Because the Lord is only dealing with the man. So you women can only come to the Lord, you know, through the man that the Lord sent to you. And that begins with this ministry. There, it ain't no women out here that can go through this Bible and break down the truth. The Lord ain't set it up like that. But the women can understand the truth through the men that the Lord sent in their lives to teach them the truth. That's the Lord reestablishing the order. It's Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the man, the woman, to the children. Just like your woman can go to Yahweh Shai. Us men can't go to Yahweh. The only way we get through Yahweh or get to Yahweh is through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is our mediator. And the only way that the women is going to get to Yahweh Shai is going to be through the men. The men would be the mediator. And it says to take, only let us be called by that name to take away our reproach. So, let the women come up under the man of the Lord so the women not going to be subject to the shame, shameful stuff that they're going to be subject to during, these, uh, during this great tribulation. And to prove that the Lord is only dealing with the man, that the Lord is only going to save the man. A loss for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he should be saved out of it. It don't say she or her or they. It just says he. This is talking about the man of the Lord. And that's why going back, 
when it says only let us be called by thy name, they're talking about the women. The women is going to be saved and receive the Lord's mercy by receiving the same mercy um, that the men receive. So the Lord is going to extend the mercy to the men, and then that same mercy will be extended to the women. And the way we're going to be saved out of it is Zephaniah 12 and 8. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Yeah, the men of the Lord was as David. Then David put to death ten, tens of thousands. And that sister said that, that the brother just decimated the soldiers with ease, with no effort. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Yeah, that's how the men of the Lord, the 144,000 prophets, that's how we're going to bring millions of our people through this great tribulation. Because we're going to be as God, performing works, miracles, having powers. We're going to be as the angel of the Lord before the men and before the men, before the people of the earth. And before our people so and that's that's what she said at the end spiritual powers are coming yeah and only spiritual powers coming to those who believe because it's a bunch of people you know they believe you know most of the ministry but superpowers and being what the world calls superheroes they can't grasp that and not only that the women too it's hard enough for the men to believe but to tell our women we're going to get superpowers to save ourselves and to save them and to save the elect, they really don't get it. They really don't see it. And to put it out there, just like only the men who believe in the power going to get this power, only the women who believe that the men is going to get that power, they're going to, on, they're going to be the only women who get saved by that power. So if you're a woman in this truth and you don't believe spiritual powers, you're not going to get saved by a man with spiritual powers. You're probably not going to get saved at all because you don't believe the, 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 the whole doctrine. So it's important for us to know every detail of this doctrine, of this testimony, so we know what to expect and what to believe in and what to have faith in. And again... Only men that believe in the spiritual powers going to get it. And only the women that believe in the spiritual powers, you know, only they're going to be saved by those spiritual powers. It's not going to be no women who don't trust that the men of the Lord get spiritual powers going to be saved. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's it for this lesson here. We just wanted to show the testimony of this sister. Um... Uh, and there's many more of our people that's having dreams. And I encourage, you know, anybody to, if you got a dream, upload it to YouTube and share it. You know, one of us uh, brothers are breaking down through the scriptures. And every vision, every, every dream that we all have, it's all true. So the Lord going to bring all these different previews and stuff that he, that he show us. He's going to make a movie out of it. And that's going to be titled, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. Hey, that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shadow Wong.